<laughs> Uganda Airlines is celebrating two years of commercial operations. The airline now operates flights to 10 destinations on the African continent using a fleet of four Sierra Gen 900 jetliners from Bombardier. With the clearance of the recently acquired A3800 new aircraft to fly long haul by the regulator Uganda Civil Aviation Authority, more routes are set to be added onto their chart. During an exclusive interview with UBC TV, Uganda Airlines acting CEO Jennifer Wamturaki revealed that most of their plans as stipulated in the business plan have been greatly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Just when we were really going up picking, we had launched about seven routes, I think, and we, the numbers were coming in. People were beginning to understand our product, our routes, our schedules, then boom, COVID. And it was global, so we had to literally shut down, airports shut down and all. So it was very brutal. So the coming back was very slow because we could not come back full throttle. On some of the routes, they had, we'd grown the schedules to three times a, a day on Juba, Nairobi. We had introduced holiday destinations, Zanzibar, Mombasa. Um, so a lot of decisions had to be made to combine some of the routes, you know, to make it not profitable as such, but to make it operational in a sense that you don't lose much more. She adds that they are now focusing on repositioning themselves to compete favorably in the new normal. We now have to look at our costs. You know, there's one thing to make money and stay afloat, but there's another thing to manage your costs. Because we're in the startup process, it's very easy for you to say, ah, this is part of startup. But now we are going into, let's watch our costs. What can we renegotiate? What contracts can we look at and go back and renegotiate them so that we have an optimum kind of operational rate or something? Uganda Airlines recently received an inclusion certificate of the Airbus on the existing air operator certificate. This will now herald the rolling out of long-haul operations. So we are not just waiting that, okay, let's wait for the red list. There are things we are doing in the background to make sure that when that red list is opened, we will be ready to go. So for now, our tentative, tentative date for Dubai is October the 3rd. Um, depending on how soon, usually for selling and marketing, you need at least two to three months. And by the way, for all these long haul flights, we should have started selling and advertising a year ago. It's that the, those markets are very advanced. So chances are we'll come up with a new debt, especially for London, China, Mumbai. We'll probably come with debts that are a little bit far so that it can give us a chance not to fly the Airbus in there empty, but to have people, yeah. To further strengthen the airline's revenue streams, the national carrier also has plans of prioritizing the handling services. <laughs> to mark two years, the airline staff, including the pilots, cabin crew and others, took time off to engage in corporate social responsibility activities at the Uganda Wildlife Education Center in Entebbe. Samuel Senono, UBC News.